Sometimes a regular hero just won't do. You need a superhero. But specific situations may require a specific kind of superhero. For instance, if you have to rescue people from a building with a gas leak, you probably don't need flamethrower girl, right? (laughs) The same is true with capacitors. Sometimes you need a super capacitor, but which specific superpowers do you need? Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Today, my guest is Eric DeRose from AVX, and we're going to take a closer look at PrismaCap, a new supercapacitor with low height, high temperature, lightweight, and a whole bunch of other superpowers that, well, I guess we'll discuss right now. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about AVX's PrismaCap. Hi, Eric. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, how are you, Amelia? Thank you so much for having me. I'm great. Thank you for asking. So I'm excited to hear about PrismaCap today. Us too. We're excited to get this to the market and have everybody prospectively looking at PrismaCap. PrismaCap is going to be a completely new product offering to AVX's supercapacitor product portfolio. PrismaCap is just a new form factor. We're not really changing the game in terms of super cap applications, super cap construction, literally just a new form factor in which super caps will be provided. From an AVX standpoint, there are limited other suppliers in the market currently that kind of offer something that's similar to Prisma Cap. So we see this as a great new technology for customers to look at. We're more than willing to walk customers through new designs, how we see Prisma Cap good fit for certain applications and so forth. Just to give a basic overview, PrismaCap, or what will be deemed as our SCP series, our prismatic EDLCs, or otherwise known as supercapacitors. The SCP series will provide the lowest profile in terms of height or thickness and our highest operating temp range available to AVX supercaps. As usual, typical applications apply. They can be used by themselves or in conjunction with primary or secondary batteries as they provide excellent backup time, longer battery lifetime extension, and also provide instantaneous power pulses as needed. Great. So Eric, can you give me a little background on what to expect with the product characteristics? So PrismaCap is actually going to use a different electrolyte system in terms of what we already offer. It uses propylene carbonate or otherwise known as PC-based electrolyte. With propylene carbonate, it has a higher natural ESR in comparison to other technologies or other electrolyte systems. Lower voltage, however, also has a wider temp range. So, you know, some pros and cons to look at. Much higher flash point is probably a lucrative characteristic of PC compared to the acetonitrile seen in AVX cylindricals or SCC or SCM series product. And then also compared to our best cap series, that's going to use an aqueous-based electrolyte technology, so much, much different than uh, best cap. In terms of capacitance range, we're going to be able to attain anywhere between 1 farad or 500 farads per individual part. So very, very wide cap offering. It's going to be able to serve, whether it's you know small power, high power, anywhere in between. Prisma cap is very, very lucrative in that sense. Getting to operating voltage, I know I previously mentioned the lower voltage. It is kind of bound by 2.1 volts per cell. And then it can extend up to 90 degrees C with an appropriate voltage rating as similar technologies offer. You know, Eric, this stands out for low voltage applications. But what about customers who are doing high voltage applications? Like I said, we're not really reinventing the wheel here in terms of how super caps are used or what applications and so forth. So there's kind of two options in which we're going to kind of steer customers. So one, the typical most common workaround would be just placing multiple parts in series or series in parallel combination to increase that working voltage or whatever to attain whatever voltage is necessary for the application. Oppositely, or what we think is a possibly better solution would be to implement a power management IC chip or a buck boost chip. And there are many suppliers in that, and AVX actually doesn't deal with that directly, but we're more than willing, again, to work with a customer and recommending some PMIC chips, one in particular that we've kind of sampled with or played around with in-house here while testing and experimenting would be chips from Linear Tech or even TI. So those are some good ones, and I know that Mauser does offer that as well. Look for Mauser for that. There are plenty of suppliers that we could talk about, some higher cost, some lower cost. The main thing to look at, at least when we're going to recommend these things, are one, understanding the necessary power, as the power will dictate what chip we're going to recommend. 
And then also the voltage range in which we're going to see whether it's both the input and output voltage that's necessary for that application. So those are going to be two key things that are going to dictate implementing one of those chips. Getting back to uh, some quick facts, though, as the, the slide kind of has laid out here, our smallest footprint that we can provide is going to be a 24 by 21 footprint layout. And then also we can get as big as 157 by 112 millimeters. So to think of that in XY, everything is going to be a function of that. As small as that or as big as that, anywhere in between is fair game. Now, the other dimension, thickness or height, depending on how you look at it, is all a function of how many layers are in the part. I'm going to kind of skip around a little bit on the slide here. You'll see that uh, everything is manufactured and shipped out of the USA. And pictured there is our corporate headquarters in Greenville, South Carolina. So everything is set up here in Greenville. Brand new test equipment, brand new manufacturing equipment. With that, everything is machine and robotic assembled. So very, very, very cool assembly line here that we have here built in Greenville. And if you kind of look at the picture there, the upper level cutout is where everything is all stationed here in Greenville for PrismaCap. Very cool. Any customers out there thinking about it, we're welcome to a tour. We're talking designs. But getting a little bit into the low profile designs here. So we can be as thin as a half millimeter and as thick as about five millimeters, give or take. So I kind of mentioned that everything is machine and robotic assembled. So with that, we layer all the electrode and separator material in layers, and it's all a function of you know, how quick the machines can get throughput, right? So depending on ESR targets that we have from our customer, capacitance targets from our customer is going to dictate how many layers in a part that we need. And also the footprint can play you know, a large factor as volume is obviously another variable. So PrismaCap is very customizable. The fact that we can program these machines to trim in certain shapes, certain XY footprints. And then again, everything is just going to be bound by thickness in terms of how many layers are in the part. So very, very lucrative from that standpoint. Very eye-opening and cool to see in terms of actual physical attributes of it. So we're very open for customization. And all of that can be done with possible tooling charges. That's not necessarily a strict requirement. That's all going to be usually quantity driven. To give you a sense of time frame, custom designs are about 12 to 14 weeks, give or take. And again, everything can be adjusted based on XY targets, ESR targets, leakage current targets, and capacitance targets. So how does PrismaCap differentiate from other supercapacitors that AVX offers? The way it differentiates compared to other technologies that we already offer, one would be the electrolyte technology that I kind of already mentioned. Another would be in terms of the way we're going to steer designs for higher voltage applications. So typically with our cylindrical series or our SCC and SCM series that others would be familiar with, PrismaCap we see as something that we think is best suited for choosing one cell and implementing an IC chip. And that's not to say we wouldn't talk designs with multiple parts in series, but we think that's probably the best scenario. So that would be another differential talking point. Another difference would be in terms of manufacturing sites and where we're shipping out of. So the fact that this is all USA-based is an advantage in terms of other product offerings. Best Cap would be all manufactured out of Mexico, and our cylindricals are all manufactured out of China. So a main thing right now in the industry is if tariffs are applicable to the certain product offering. And for our cylindrical series, they are, as they do come out of China. Prisma Cap would not be applicable. So that would be a pro versus those. Some other cool facts about PrismaCap, very, very low ESR and DC leakage current values. So a characteristic of SuperCaps, designing around those two parameters are huge, specifically to cater to the particular application. So whether we're designing around ESR to handle those higher pulse currents or whether we're designing around leakage current for longer holdup times, for instance, those are two key values that we can design around for PrismaCap in particular. And those are key parameters that would potentially dictate the footprint if we're talking custom designs. Some quick hits in terms of PrismaCap. These are all supplied in tray packaging, so there's no worry to think about the integrity of the leads being bent or harmed in shipping. They are all Rojas and Reach compliant, and just to reiterate again, all shipped out of the USA in Greenville, South Carolina. Okay, great. Let's dive under the hood of this thing. So we kind of got into a little brief specifics about how we can customize these parts, but to kind of give you a sense of what's standard now and available, we're going to have two already available footprints, one 48 by 40. And the other, I quickly mentioned 21 by 24. I may have said 24 by 21, but that is the layout of how the parts are mechanically built. Additional standard sizes are being qualified now. That's everything, I would say, larger than 48 by 40. And we will have one intermediate size in between the two sizes that are already standard. We think this is going to be probably a product line in which there will be 
six, seven, or eight standard sizes, give or take. And then we see a lot of things going custom from there. So customer may come in, look at, hey, let me test out the 48 by 40 part. You know, everything works electrically in terms of specs. And then if they think that their design dictates a custom solution, we're more than willing to start talking about that with them. Just reiterating, thickness is a function of how many electro layers are in the part anywhere between two layers and 14 layers. And that correlates to about a half a millimeter thick, which is almost as thin as a business card, all the way out to about five millimeters thick. The copper surface mount terminals are fixed position. So as it states there, pitch to pitch of the two terminals atop the part is about 12 millimeters. Each terminal is three millimeters in width and in height from the base of the part to top. And there are subtle tolerances associated with those. And then also, one thing to mention is that both of those terminals must come out the same exact end. So we're not able to customize that aspect of the part, unfortunately. Also on the back side of the part, there is a double-sided adhesive in which customers can stick it down onto their PCB and then handle the soldering process. So that is something that is lucrative to the product that some of the other technologies don't have, that everything has to be uh, soldered, can't be reflow soldered. That's a main point. These cannot be reflow solderable. So Eric, where do you see PrismaCap being used? Great question. So PrismaCap is going to be a great use for applications in which are going to be size constraint or space constraint designs. Of course, this product can be super thin. It is super lightweight. It has the higher flash point. So in terms of applications that may worry about flammability or anything like that, PrismaCap does cater to those needs. So things that come out right offhand that are things like wearables, handheld devices, high temp industrial applications, Things like Bluetooth keyboards or wireless keyboards would be great. Getting into tablets and e-readers, that kind of also gets into handhelds. Higher reliability applications are especially a great application for PrismaCap in a sense that with that wider temp range, how we can attain plus 90 degrees that other technologies can't is a huge plus for PrismaCap for those applications. Battery assist is always a target application for SuperCaps in general in a sense that Super caps will take on those frequent or high current pulses of that application. So the battery doesn't have to withstand those and the super cap takes on those. So longer lifetime of the battery, more improved efficiency of the system. Power peripherals is a key or general application for Prisma cap that we think would be a good one. And again, that kind of is intertwined with those space constrained designs. But the wearables is definitely a particular one that we think is a great key market for the fact that these can be super thin, super lightweight, and it also has the capability to be up to three inches bend radius for our thinnest part that would be a half millimeter thick. So that would be something that our customers may look at as an application that PrismaCap serves that other parts can't. Okay, cool. So where do I go for more information? So first things first, you know, you can always check out the AVX website for all of our available data sheets, not only PrismaCap, but our cylindricals. That would be the SCC and SCM series data sheets. Even BestCap is on there as well. That's right at that link, avx.com slash supercapacitors. Don't hesitate to inquire with your local AVX sales rep for support and talking potential custom designs with PrismaCap. And don't forget to definitely go back to Mauser, order those PrismaCap parts now that are available. Mauser also has our full portfolio of supercapacitors and be on the lookout for some range extensions of some other standardized footprints coming soon. Excellent. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me, Eric. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you very much. Thanks again, Amelia. And before we go, don't forget to click that link. There you can go straight to a mauser.com page for more information about PrismaCap supercapacitors from AVX. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. Can't miss it right across the top. Or check out YouTube, keyword EE Journal. <laughs>